So this tutorial is going to cover the Tech Organizer. This is a pattern by Around the Bob Bobbin, and I got mine from the Quilt to Cow. Um, I have made one before. This will be my second one. I use it all the time. I'm a school teacher. Um, I keep it stashed in my uh, computer bag, and I have pens, headphones, just whatever I need in there. All my accessories for I have a MacBook. Um, so it's just a great way to store things. And I decided I needed another one. So um, it's a seven pocket tech organizer and it does keep everything in its place. Um, you do work with zippers and you do work with mesh. And I got a kit from the Quilted Cow. I sent in a request for this one because I really liked this line and wanted to make another one of these in this line, uh, which they called Nutmeg. So they were able to fulfill this request. So I've got my main fabric, my lining fabric, two zippers. Um, there's a zipper in the front and there's a zipper in the back. Um, the key ring so you can hook it on something if you'd like to. And then mesh. If you've never worked with mesh before, um, I don't think it's that bad. You just take it slowly, do a lot of pinning or clipping and it comes along. Um, the only thing you need to add to this is um, interfacing. Uh, you need two thirds yard of that, and it's recommended to use the shape flex, uh, which I keep always keep on stock because I use it for a lot of things. I've not made the cord wrap before, but that is also in this as well. So the first step is to cut out all of your pieces, and the the pattern has great diagrams, so I would follow the diagram exactly. Um, the great thing about this kit is that you only need two fat quarters, okay? So I cut out all my pieces here for that I need for the exterior and elsewhere and my interior and then all of my mesh. And before I even cut my, um, my two pieces of fabric, I messed up the first time I made it and didn't read the pattern very well. Um, it is easy and the pattern is right. Fuse your shape flex to your fabrics before you start cutting because I had I cut everything out and I hadn't fused it so then I had to spend time cutting out all these little itty bitty pieces and then fusing it and so much easier just fuse your shape flex you just need to cut to the sh to the size of your uh, material and once you fuse it then you go ahead and cut out all your pieces all right let's get started. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to take your upper exterior front piece. I believe that's what it is. Yep. And then I put the zipper and it's right side down. And I didn't trim anything off the zipper before I began because I'll trim as I go. Um, but I just laid it and then I stitched a quarter of an inch along the bottom and made sure to back tack at the beginning and the end. And then what you're going to do now is you're going to fold this. So I'm just turning this over and then I'm folding the fabric away here. And once you do that, <clears throat> I'm going to give it a good press to hold it down. All right, so I turn that piece uh, right side up and so it's facing right up, right side up. So now this is the lower exterior front piece. And I've just laid it right side down on top of that and I'm aligning my ends here and here and then I'll align that raw edge with the end of my zipper and then I'll stitch here a quarter of an inch to attach this. And once I'm done, I'll take this and fold it back and then give it a good pressing. So this is the upper interior front and it's laying right side up on my board. And now I'm going to take this um, this is the piece that I just finished putting together. So I'm going to take this smaller piece and I'm going to flip it up so I see the stitching. And then I'm just going to take this and I'm going to lay it over this piece and I'm going to align everything. And then once everything's aligned, I'll put a clip here and a clip here to hold that in, in place. And then I'm going to sew on that stitch line that I already have done to attach that piece to the back side of the zipper. So this is the piece that I sewed on and then I folded it up and I pressed it and then I ended up top stitching um, a little bit away from the zipper all the way down to sew those two pieces together. Now I'm going to attach uh, the back side of this one. 
All right, so this piece right here, this is my lower interior front, and then I have taken, um, this is with the zipper that I've already sewed on, they're the two pieces that I did. I folded that up, and then the back of the zipper I just laid on over that um, lower interior front piece, and then I've lined everything and clipped everything, and now I'm just gonna sew over this existing stitch line to attach it, and then I will fold this piece back to meet this piece, and then I will top stitch on the other side of the zipper. All right, so here's the front, here is the back, and um, there's my top stitching there. And what I did next was I took a ruler and I trimmed off the excess zipper tape there and on this side. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this to the machine and just baste on the zipper right there close to the edge and right there. Reason being, if this ends up making it close to that edge, it won't come off. And if it ends up coming close to this edge, it won't slide right off. And then the next thing I'm going to do after I baste a line there and a line there to protect this from not sliding off my zipper, um, you get to trim this panel according to the pattern, but you're not going to trim any off the top. You're only going to measure from the top down how much, how the height is supposed to be, and then trim from the lower edge down here. All right, so this was my key ring tab, and it was a square, so it doesn't matter what, how you fold it in half, but you're going to fold it in half right sides together. And then near the raw edges, you're going to sew it a quarter of an inch down. And then I just took these, my seam, and pressed it front and back, and then I pressed it, and it's got a tube, so now I'm going to turn it inside out. So once I had it turned inside out, then I stitched down both sides, and I didn't add the key ring here last time, but I'm going to give it a go. It was a little bit difficult to put on at the end, and you don't have to, you can totally put it on at the end. Um, but I'm going to put it on here, maybe my bead mistake, I don't know. And I'm going to fold this in half, and then I'm going to take my this piece here, and I'm going to put my raw edges, I'm going to center it, and then I am going to baste to stitch that down to secure it. So right now I'm attaching my binding strips. I cut three of them at the beginning to my mesh, and it's important to know and I think I forgot to say it at the beginning, but I'll go back and put something there, that when you're cutting out your material, <clears throat> you're only applying interfacing to like half of the material because you don't want your binding strips to have um, interfacing on it. And also your zip pocket lining, you don't want to have interfacing on it. So these are the pieces that don't have interfacing. Also, this doesn't call for interfacing, but I did interface mine. It's not needed on that piece. All right, so I have it, and then I'm going to just fold it in half, and then I'm gonna take my mesh pocket, and then I'm gonna line the raw edge to the top, and then I'm gonna stitch it down. And then when I'm done stitching it down, I just take it and I fold it over, and then I top stitch it down, and then you have your binding on the top of your mesh pockets. All right, so I have my interior back, and this is the slightly larger mesh pocket, and I have um, aligned it and clipped it because we're gonna baste it on. And then my other two smaller ones, this is the panel. I have my exterior front, and I've clipped it on, and then to flip it over, I also have it on the back. So with basting, <clears throat> sorry, I'm just going to take my machine and put up my stitch length, um, and then just remember to turn it back when you're all done. And basting stitch is just to help hold everyone, everything in place. So I'm just going to baste all the way around the perimeter here um, of the mesh pocket. All right, so here it is all basted down. I had some kind of stretched when I was sewing, but it lays perfectly flat. And I just trimmed off any excess that was kind of stretched over. And there's that part. So... Now we're going to go on to uh, making the exterior back unit. So you're going to need your other zipper and you're also going to need your zip pocket lining, which does not have any interfacing on it. So uh, I didn't do it, but I forgot to do it. After I basted my mesh on, I forgot to sew a line down the middle 
to create pockets on each of my mesh ones <sighs> even though it was the second time around and I don't know how I missed it but I did but when you're at this stage basting I mean you don't have to create a pocket but they are useful I mean if you have like longer things that that pocket would get in the way of then don't put a don't put that line down the middle so you would just um, draw your line or you can you know go for it freely and then just stitch a straight stitch all the way up to the binding and then back down to reinforce that okay so on this one here um, see I didn't create any pockets this is the one I just finished and let's see if I can open this one up all right I also because I didn't label everything and I grabbed wrong pieces this fabric should be this fabric but oh well I had extra fabric so those aren't divided into pockets they're just long um, there's the back and there's the pocket in there um, but this is the other one I made first this is my original one and I think this is my back pocket piece Oh yeah, I'm, I just stuff things on the stuffer. But anyway, here's the front, and I did do that sew line after I basted the mesh on. And let's take a look at the inside here. Okay. And so yeah, there's my there's my pockets. I also sewed it on that one, and I sewed it on that one. So these are great. I love them. I have a Mac, so I have all these different accessories. So again. Not necessary to create the pockets, but helpful if you want. All right, so I have my uh, zip pocket lining here and I have aligned my zipper there with my edges. And now I'm just going to stitch a quarter of an inch down up here at the top of my zipper to connect it to my zip pocket lining. All right, so there it is, it is stitched. And now I'm just going to take this uh, and I'm just gonna fold this down and I'm going to align everything, even that zipper. And there's that, right side up. You can see the stitch there. And now I'm going to stitch um, the wrong side of the zipper to the right side of my fabric there, all the way down, and that's going to create um, my pocket. So I finished sewing it, and now I'm just going to turn it over Turn it over like this so my zipper is right side up and if you want to you can give this a good press and I've got it so that the pocket is hanging below the zipper. Alright, it would be really useful if you cut out little pieces of paper and label your pieces before you start sewing. I think I used a piece on something else um, so I had to recut this piece but anyway this is the upper exterior back here's my zipper I've got my pull to the left and it's face up which it needs to be so you're gonna take this upper exterior back piece and put it right side down and you're just gonna align everything here and then you're gonna sew it a quarter of an inch all the way down so now that that's sewed on you're going to flip that up just like that away from the zipper and then you're going to top stitch. Sorry. You're gonna to top stitch all the way down and you can take this to the iron and give it a good press too to help hold it down. All right, so I'm going to just take this part and just, you know, fold it under. So I just get this raw edge of my zipper tape. So it looks like that. And then this here is my lower exterior back, which is D. And again, I messed up. I used parts for others, so. Really go ahead and cut out little pieces of paper and attach them A, B, C, D, E, you know, so on. Eh, luckily I had enough fabric. I cut more. I could have used another piece, but I kind of, I guess, not this fabric showing more. So, oh well, that happens, even though it's my second time making it. All right, so everything is aligned, and now I'm just going to stitch a quarter of an inch down here. All right, so I want to top stitch this other side, but I can't exactly like this. So I'm just going to take my zipper and I'm going to open it up. And all of this is going to fall away. And so I can just take this over to the machine and just top stitch here now through the layers that I only want to top stitch through. All right. Do do do. All right, 
So there it is, and I zipped it back together, and now I'm just going to fold that part up because I want to work with my, zip, my pocket here. So what I'm going to do is you're going to start here, and you're going to start at 3 8 of an inch, but as you get down, you're going to taper in um, to a half of an inch, and then when you get down here, you're going to stop um, far enough away from the bottom according to the pattern, and then you're going to pivot with your needle down, and you're going to stitch, and I've already marked the opening that's going to be left here at the bottom. And you're saying, opening, there's a fold there. Well, you're going to cut that off. This bottom part fold off, you're going to cut it off. So you need to stop so far away according to the pattern from the bottom edge, pivot. You're going to sew there, back tack, skip over to this line, um, back tack here, and then keep sewing, and then pivot. And then you're going to start off at a half of an inch, and then as you get closer, you're going to taper in to 3 8 of an inch. All right, and then you're going to just trim trim the extra uh, seam allowance to a quarter of an inch, and you're going to cut this fold off to create an opening on the bottom. All right, so there it is. You can see I kind of was trying to trimming. I used my rotary cutter, but with scissors, maybe you could get a little bit closer. And then I trimmed off close to the folds, and then I took my seam, so there's my opening right there. I took my seam and I ironed it open on both sides. And then I came up here and I made sure to move my zipper tab in because you don't want to cut that off. And I trimmed off the excess zipper tape on both sides. And then I took it to the machine and I sewed it down right there on the zipper tape and right there, there. So that way if this gets too close to any edge, it won't fall off. All right, the next step is to take this piece that you've been working on and trim it according to the pattern. So, um, I, my, this piece ended up being just a little bit smaller than the, the diagram stated. Eh, maybe it was just me and my cutting, probably because I was attaching the wrong pieces maybe. So I just ended up cutting this down to the size of this one and I only trimmed from the bottom edge. I did not trim from the top edge. Alright, so now it is time to layer all these pieces together. So I have my interior back piece, which is my, which is right side up. And then I have my front uh, front unit and the interior side is down, so this would be the outside of my tuck case. And then I have this piece right here, which is my exterior back and uh, wrong, the wrong side is up. So I'm going to clip everything after I line everything. And then what you're going to do is just make sure they're all the same height, all the same width. If, if one is a little bit longer, you can do some trimming and so, trimming and so on until they're the same size. Um, but you're going to pin all these layers together and then you're going to stitch all the way around the bag with a 3 8 inch seam allowance because this is where you're going to turn everything inside out. Now when you stitch here, it's okay to have this part of the pocket in this in the um, seam but you do not want this so if you have to like pin this little piece back like take a pin and pin it to the pocket just the pocket only and this side too so it doesn't get caught in your sewing stitch line uh, go ahead and do that so now we're going to go sew all these together you can use a regular foot a walking foot is also a good suggestion to use all right, there we are. Um, this part got a little bumpy. I did put that key ring on, but I also had my zipper poles both there, I think. And so if I needed, if I were to redo this, I'd make sure my zipper poles were pulled into the middle of both of the pieces before I did all the stitching. But you can see here, this, the ends here of my pocket are not in my stitch. And now I'm going to uh, just trim off all the corners at an angle to create less bulk there and then I'm going to turn it all inside out. Alright, so with everything turned now, I'm going into this opening that I haven't stitched up yet and um, I take my point turner. It's a little bit thicker uh, so it really does help and then I'm just going in and I'm really trying to like poke out my corners uh, gently because you don't want to poke it through your fabric as best as I can and when you're, when you're all done with that, then you're going to take this pocket out where you have your opening and you're just going to match the sides together with the fabric tucked under that's why you ironed it earlier and once you have it matched together then you're just going to top stitch that opening closed so there's plenty of fabric if you want to make these I haven't made one of these yet but you can go ahead and do it 
Um, so again, just helpful hints. When you cut out all your fabric at the beginning, cut out little pieces of paper and label them A, B, C, D, E according to the exterior and interior pieces and clip them so you know that you're pulling the right uh, pieces when you're sewing. And don't forget to sew um, your lines here on the mesh after you baste it if you want those pockets. And maybe add this at the very end because it did create a little bit of bulk. Oh, and for sure, when you, before you sew all your layers together at the end, make sure that this is all the way open. Um, I did it and then I got freaked out and I like grabbed my seam ripper and I almost started to seam rip it apart, but then I opened that inside pocket a little bit more. And luckily this was over just enough for me to like stick my finger in and then shove my zipper all the way down. Yeah, you need this zipper that's uh, on the pocket to be all the way open or just be safe open both of the zippers all the way before you start layering um, everything together maybe not all the way because you don't want it at the end where you're sewing but close to the end on both ones and that will really help so there's the tech organizer happy sewing